Wonderful. Uh, good afternoon, or uh, if you're here uh, stateside, uh, like I am, good morning. My name is Reed Devaney, and I'm one of the authors of uh, The Data Vortex from Interbellum Polish Mathematics to a Novel Topology for Connecting Cores. Uh, my co-authors are here today, and uh, hopefully, uh, if they could be made presenters, will be available at the end of this presentation to answer any of uh, your specific questions. Uh, today's talk will be divided into five categories, the Polish roots of the data vortex, a description of the data vortex topology, the nature and performance of legacy data vortex validation systems, using the data vortex for direct core-to-core -core communication, and novel application areas that can address today's pressing problems. Data Vortex Technologies holds the unique distinction of being a multi-generation family computing company. My grandfather, Dr. Kokri, pictured here on the left, is the inventor of the Data Vortex and chairman of the company. My mother, Carolyn Devaney, is the CEO, and I, Reed Devaney, Data Vortex Generation 3, am the communications director and an intellectual property author and contributor. Here we are at SC16 in Salt Lake, Utah, receiving an HPC Wire Award from Tom Tabor for best collaboration between industry and government. My grandfather's story and the story of the data vortex have deep roots in the Polish mathematical tradition, so I'm honored to present this paper to our gracious host at the University of Warsaw. Uh, during the interbellum period between the world wars, Lvov, Poland, which is present-day Lviv, Ukraine, was a major seat of topological mathematics. The University of Lvov's mathematic faculty, which included John von Neumann, Stefan Bonach, Stanislav Ulong, and Leopold Enfeld, met at the Scottish Cafe to discuss their theorems and problems. Some mathematicians speculate that it was the most productive cafe in the history of Europe. Problems that an individual could not solve were written down in the Scottish book and left as a challenge for their colleagues, oftentimes with prizes offered. Many of these mathematicians left Poland for the United States during the Second World War, or slightly beforehand, and joined the Manhattan Project, primarily in Los Alamos, New Mexico. The Scottish book was left behind and buried under Lvov University's football pitch for safekeeping. Following the successful development of the atomic bomb in the end of the war, many of the Poles accepted positions with American universities, bringing with them their unique traditions and research areas, including topological dynamics. Bonnock's wife, who had remained in Poland with her husband, retrieved the Scottish book and sent it to Los Alamos. Problem number 110 of the Scottish book is the forefather of the data vortex. On October 1st, 1935, Stanislav Ulam posited a problem regarding the flow of particles in a dynamical system. Let M be a given manifold. Does there exist a numerical constant K such that every continuous mapping F of the manifold M into part of itself which satisfies the shown condition? This problem, which von Neumann attempted in 1937, remained unsolved well into the 1970s. Koch Reed and Polish mathematician Christina Cooperberg, both of Auburn University, discovered the solution and provided a counterexample in which the manifold is Euclidean three space, the associated prize, a bottle of wine. Upon sending Ulam the solution, Reed and Cooperberg received a three word telegram, red or white. The solution shown here was published in Fundamenta Mathematica as a rest point free dynamical system on R to the third with uniformly bound trajectories in 1981. As you can see in figure one, the form of a vortex has begun to take shape. Koch Reed spent the closing decades of the 20th century working with the United States intelligence community and had accounts on Seymour Cray's first machines. During this time, he began to consider and <clears throat> pardon me, how the mathematical solution to 110 could be modified to describe and reinvent data movement within a system. As many of those present can attest, great ideas rarely come in the laboratory or while sitting at one's desk. One afternoon in the early 90s, Reed went on a walk in Rocky Mountain National Park with his beloved Labrador, Chloe. While staring into the mountains, the solution to his quandary appeared, and thus the data vortex was born. 
What began as a walk in the woods has since grown into a vibrant company made up of an intelligent team and exciting partnerships. In 1995, Reed patented a multi-level minimum logic network. The ring structure of problem 110, which carries particles, inspired this structure, which carries information, a dynamic system of three-dimensional Euclidean space. The data vortex topology allows for small packet data flow that is high radix, self-routing, congestion-free, and is enabled by fine-grained parallelism. This is important for networks that need high bandwidth, yet low latency, and importantly, are linearly scalable. The data vortex topology can replace the crossbar within all points of the IT ecosystem. Crossbars like long packets, and with long packets come a series of problems. Time is spent using an algebraic algorithm to set the switch, which is hidden by data transmission. Since low radix switches require many hops, high radix crossbar switches are chosen to reduce the number of hops. Higher radix crossbars require more time to set, resulting in longer packets. The data vortex does not have this setting problem, Thus, the packets can remain short. It consists of a collection of richly connected rings. The rings and the connection between the rings are built using parallel data buses. In a radix R switch with R equals two to the N, the rings are arranged at N plus one levels. A packet on the entry level, level N, the outermost level, can travel to any of the output ports. When a packet travels from level N to level N minus one, the most significant bit of the binary address of the output is fixed so that a packet on level n minus one can reach only half of the output ports. A packet on level n minus two can only reach one fourth and so forth. This process continues so that when a packet reaches level zero, the target output is determined. To overcome the problem of algebraic setting, that which has caused the use of long packets, the network must be self-routing. A possible solution for the network to be a dynamical system DV that is discrete in both time T and space S. DV is a function that is defined on the whole space S. The state of the whole space S at time T must be known in order to state the whole space S at time T plus one. By definition, a dynamical system. The data vortex is thus a dynamical system that carries data. There is no switch setting for data movement management as in a crossbar, which is set by the algebraic algorithm. Data can be dropped into the flow of the system and transfer can be variable in size and can originate from a variety of inputs. A packet's trajectory through the network is dependent on the packet header and the location and movements of the other packets in the switch. What started as a solution to an unsolved problem has become a central element of our technology the data vortex switch. On the right is Cooperberg's work on the Seifert conjecture, another example of the derivative work from problem number 110. More than two dozen global patents on the data vortex switch have been filed and published over the past 20 years, each of them playing an important role in solidifying the portfolio of this revolutionary technology. This intellectual property effort is also tied to ongoing research and development projects that validate the mathematically proven claims in hardware. In legacy validation systems, this was done using FPGAs. Since it is costlier to efficiently distribute a DV network among many FPGAs, an entire Radix64 data vortex switch was put into a single FPGA. To increase compute node to compute node bandwidth, we interface each compute node with 16 parallel data vortex networks. Each vortex interface controller on a compute node selects a data vortex network at random thus balancing the traffic load. The VIC contains an Intel Altera FPGA in 16 8 gigabits per second CERTES and communicates with the data vortex switch box. In these legacy validation systems, there are two switch boxes within a system and eight Altera FPGAs per switch box. Each VIC connects to all 16 Radix 64 networks in a switch box. Though Altera was chosen in this instance, the data vortex topology is not specifically tied to any single technology. In this diagram of the legacy system architecture, 
we see the route taken by long data packets sent from commodity processors across the PCIe bus and broken into smaller messages by the VIC. These smaller messages are sent across 16 Radix N data vortex networks. These systems have been deployed across the United States at government and academic sites and have users from around the world, ranging in applications from few body physics and 3D FFTs for NAMD and VASP to quantum simulation and big data graph analytics. Data Vortex users have seen noticeable performance improvement in many key application areas that are data movement dependent. This has been particularly the case when A, large amounts of small data packets are transferred in non-structured chaotic traffic, and B, there is congestion in the, the network. The former happens in situations where aggregation is otherwise very costly or impossible. In an instance of the random access benchmark, giga updates per second or GUPS, the data vortex network achieves greater than 100 times acceleration compared with industry leading cross bar network topologies. Congestion in other networks happen when the number of compute nodes grow larger, as cross bar topologies are unable to handle the higher bandwidth. Data Vortex performance in this area has been explored with three dimensional FFTs and breadth first search. A Data Vortex enabled system also has the highest performance per core per multi node machine on the Graph 500 breadth first search list. Here we see latency as a function of switch loading. As the load increases, latency remains the same. The second graph comes from runs on Mountain Dow, a multi level data vortex computer at Pacific Northwest National Laboratory in Washington State. These runs prove the scalability of the data vortex topology as benchmark performance remains unchanged as the network expands to another hop. A few years ago, data vortex users at PNNL identified limitations of the data vortex validation systems, particularly the PCIe bottleneck as the source of congestive limitations. The fault, therefore, lies not in the data vortex topology, but rather in the legacy protocol in present day commodity chips and servers. While newer consortiums such as CXL, Gen Z, and C6 are exploring PCIe alternatives, they fail to explore the entire data vortex potential. Data vortex technology's most recent global application, patent application, pardon me, Method and apparatus for improved data transfer between processor cores solves this problem, as the data vortex switch is used to directly connect cores, bypassing all buses and allowing for seamless exploitation of all data vortex properties. Simply stated, it is an embodiment of an interconnect apparatus that can enable improved signal integrity, even at high clock rates, increased bandwidth, and lower latency. In this instantiation, a sending processing core can send data to a receiving core by forming a packet whose header indicates the location of the receiving core and whose payload is the data to be sent. The packet is sent to the data vortex switch. The switch is on the same chip as an array of processing cores and routes the packet to the receiving core, first by routing the packet to the processing core array containing the receiving processing core. The data vortex switch <clears throat> then routes the packet to the receiving processing core in a processing core array. Since the data vortex switches are not crossbar switches, there is no need to globally set and reset the data vortex switches as different groups of packets enter the switches. Mounting the data vortex switch on the same chip as the array of processing cores in accessible on-chip memory reduces the power required and reduces the latency. <clears throat> The data vortex switch on chip can talk to a larger data vortex network, increasing the scale from core to core communication across a chip to core to core communication across a server, and finally core to core communication across a system. The benefit of this idealized system, internally referred to as Chloe, named after Dr. Reed's beloved dog, with whom he originally discovered the data vortex, is a unique computing environment <clears throat> with direct small packet core to core communication across thousands of cores. The user of this system can benefit from tremendous compute opportunity without paying the bandwidth and congestive costs that are constrained by present bottlenecks. If these data vortex switch on chips are manufactured on silicon substrates, 
then the surety setting problem is also erased. The resulting system would be self-thinking and unlike any other machine on the market. It fits the parameters of a smarter, more self-sufficient computer, such as the idealized future computing system outlined in IARPA's RFI 1901, published in 2018. <clears throat> this market agnostic solution has the potential for applicability across multiple scales within the IT ecosystem and across the spectra of computing fields. Beyond traditional HPC, there exists possible entry points into the cloud, edge computing and IoT, data center retrieval, and elsewhere. Already, efforts in cloud computing are underway using data vortex, legacy data vortex technology, and users have begun developing the data vortex for high performance middleware, such as RabbitMQ. At this very conference two years ago, our partners at Providencia Worldwide presented Vortex Topology Messaging, Data Vortex for High Performance Middleware, which compared RabbitMQ runs on Data Vortex and over FDR and Finiband. The comparison looked at gradually larger, larger messages from 8 to 128,000 bytes. In all instances, the Data Vortex showed at least twice the performance with 10x performance on 128,000 bytes. We are also playing in the realm of quantum computing. Dr. S Dr. Santiago Betzalou, our Director of Research Science and an adjunct professor at the University of North Texas, develops QuantSim Bench with researchers at Los Alamos National Laboratory. The GitHub URL is shown here, and we encourage you and your colleagues to run the benchmark. Importantly, we believe that the data vortex can be used to address many of the problems that we are facing today, March 25th, 2020. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of students and workers around the globe are joining the already congested telecommuting infrastructure for the very first time. New systems are needed to address the rapid acceleration of COVID-19 and other viruses and superbugs. And the current unrest is highlighting flaws in our financial infrastructure and national security. In this confusing period in human history, the need for a novel topology that can reimagine computing and communication is increasingly evident. As implementation opportunities and use cases for the topology expand, the central data vortex idea has remained unchanged, and its ties to Stanislav Ulam and the Polish mathematical tradition remain important. Members of our technical team, Mike Ives, Ron Denny and Santiago Betzalou are here today and able to answer any of your specific questions. Thank you very much for your time.